Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics, and today we're going to be bringing you something a little bit different. We had the opportunity to go up to the Milwaukee area over the holidays, and so we got to visit a couple really nice fish stores. Uh, the first one that we're going to be bringing you today is the Fish Factory. It's a great store in Milwaukee. If you live in uh, central or southern Milwaukee, even northern Illinois, it's definitely worth the trip to check out. I'm going to put their contact information and the store details, their store website, in the description below. So check them out if you get an opportunity. I think it'll be well worth your time. So we're going to go ahead and take you inside the store and see what it looks like. So stay tuned. So I'm going to have to do a voiceover for this, unfortunately, because there was a couple things going on with the audio in there. It wasn't the greatest, and they had some copyrighted music playing in the background, so I didn't want to get in trouble. But this is the Fish Factory. They've been in business for over 30 years, so they must be doing something right. And so we're going to go inside, take a look, see what they've got. The place is impressive. It's clean. As you can see here, here's the view when you walk in. And store's in great shape. I like this. I like the, the look of the store. It, it kind of reminds me again when I was a kid. You've got the tanks all lit up uh, and the store's a little bit darker. And so here we're looking at some, look at the hyphen on these swords, on these males. Uh, pretty impressive. So those were definitely cool. Moving over, we've got some electric blue Jack Dempsey's. They're in nice shape. Uh, they look a lot better than the ones I have. I must say I was impressed with them uh, quite a bit. So they're looking pretty good. Go on up, and we've got our, our red tail sharks and some cichlids in there. We've got some platies up there. Uh, I've got some honey garamis, uh, dwarf honey garamis, and these are great fish uh, for beginners, especially for smaller tanks. Got some otos in there as well. And so, again, uh, definitely some fish, uh, especially the honey garamis for, for a beginner. Uh, here again, we've got some nice looking platies, and then down at the bottom, that is a farlowella cat. And those are pretty cool, uh, tend to be very peaceful, kind of blend in. It's kind of fun to just to see where they're at uh, in the tanks sometimes. So there's actually three rows of tanks here. Here's some Pictus cats. Uh, these guys are, are pretty crazy, very active. Uh, they can get somewhat large, and they like to be in a, in a decent sized group. So uh, the more you get, the happier they're going to be. Moving on up, again, nice looking liar tail uh, sort of uh, mollies we got going on here. Like those a lot. And then over here, uh, they had a lot of nice angels. And so that's one of the things I think that they're known for is uh, these koi angels here were absolutely beautiful. Uh, these were cool. And so, again, uh, for a community fish, uh, these platies were, were looking pretty nice. And, again, it's not something you see the painted blue crescent platy. Uh, it's not a real common platy. So definitely something, if I was keeping a community tank, I would certainly look to add those. Uh, nice looking guppies here. And so as we come up, uh, we've got some Denison barbs. These fish look really cool when they get uh, a little bit older. They get some really nice color, some red in the fins and on the face. Uh, again, nice schooling fish, but they do get a little bit larger. Here we've got the rummy nose. These were some nice looking rummy nose. It's not coming up on camera, but they had a nice real dark red face. Uh, and here we've got some uh, glow light tetras. Nice beginner fish there as well. And you can see these tanks really are in good shape. This was one of my favorite fish. Uh, these were the uh, feather fin uh, rainbows. I like these fish. They don't get super huge. The fins are amazing looking. Nice color. Again, you see the tanks, the, the substrate's in good shape. The glass is in good shape. And so they do a good job of keeping their tanks clean. Some more koi angels. Uh, like the fact that throughout the entire tour, I didn't see fish that were in bad shape. These are cool, the half beaks. I've had these before, only the colors weren't as nice as what we're looking at here. And it's cool because as they get, they, they stay primarily at the top of the tank and they can kind of almost do like a staircase sort of uh, schooling behavior from time to time, which I find it kind of interesting. Again, here are some really cool looking uh, platies. And again, I did a bad job of recording the actual name tags, and now I'm having to do this off of memory because my audio was sort of shot. Uh, some catfish, and then we've got some albino iridescent sharks. These will get on the larger side for sure. I do like the albinos. In fact, I think I prefer the albinos over the standard silvers, but you have to have a pretty large tank to keep those successfully long term. And so here uh, we're moving on up. And we got some red tail sharks, got some Bolivian rams, nice looking rams. Uh, and we kind of come around to the other side. And again, we see some nice looking angels. So if angel fish are your thing, 
Uh, this is definitely a place where, again, if you're in the southern central part of Wisconsin, uh, upside down cats that we're looking at here, uh, if angels are your thing, this would definitely be a place to check out. Uh, upside down cats, not something you see a lot in the hobby anymore. Uh, and it's kind of cool that they have them. So it's actually a Synodonis cat, and that's pretty cool. Moving on up, we've got our, our buttercup platies and balloon platies, it looks like. And then we've got our hillstream loaches. Look at that long fin tiger bar. That's kind of interesting. That's not something I see a lot of, but uh, I kind of like it. And so uh, the hillstream loaches are very cool. And as we come around, we've got some gold garamis. One of my first garamis ever, named him Gary. Uh, here's a flower horn, and so I thought this was nice. You know, and some people don't necessarily appreciate the, the big growth on the top of the head. This flower horn's pretty big and doesn't have it yet. I don't know if it's going to appear on that fish, but if it's not something you're into, you'd rather have that smaller uh, or less pronounced nuchal hump. There would be the flower horn for you. This was a nice setup. Love the uh, silver dollars, the red hook silver dollars. Uh, this was uh, a cool looking tank. I think it was, uh, it's definitely more impressive when you see it in person. So we come back around and here we have Moving on up, oh, cobalt cichlids. I like these. They actually had nice color that's not coming through on camera as nice as it was in person, but uh, they get a nice powdery light blue, which I find to be very cool. And we come on up, and there we've got a fire mouth. And so as I like to, into some jewel cichlids as well, as I like to say, the red devils I got certainly don't look like this. I thought I was getting fire mouth cichlids in that one tank. Wound up with some red devils, but that's what I was looking for. Nice looking fish. These are definitely cool it's not something uh, you see a lot of sometimes uh, certainly in the pet stores by us the filament barbs I don't typically see them but really cool uh, and then we got the green tiger barbs as well that look to be in great shape and we come on up got some nice red rainbows and again you get them uh, comfortable in a tank and they're really going to start popping with some nice red color nice looking mollies and what I liked about their mollies, and this is something I think is somewhat unusual, no matter what tank, you know, they had a, a few tanks with mollies in them, and often you see mollies doing the, what I like to call the death dance, where their fins are clamped up. Here's some nice looking angels. The fins are clamped up, and they're kind of doing the shimmy. You don't buy those mollies. Their organs are shutting down, but for them, the mollies that they had all look to be healthy, and that's definitely something that's impressive. It's not something you see all the time. Uh, some nice looking neons. Again, angels. Uh, they have a lot of angels, a lot of variety. The black angels here looked really good. Some, oh, and there's a blue phantom pleckle that was absolutely beautiful in person. Uh, the black angels here had a real deep dark black, which I thought was awesome. Sometimes you get the black angels and they, they're a little bit washed out, but those were definitely nice. And keeping fish in this kind of shape, it takes a lot of work. And so uh, I definitely commend uh, the fish factory for keeping their fish in such wonderful shape. And then again, here we've got some black mollies, and again, they look healthy, right? They're not doing the shimmy. We come up. I like these a lot, too, and I'm really not happy that I forgot to look or forgot to uh, record the name tag of these because those were some pretty sweet-looking either rasboras or tetras. Nice-looking dwarf garamis. A lot of color, a lot of vibrance. And again, here we've got some angels. We've got some kois. Very good looking. Some larger tinfoil barbs. Uh, these are, if you've got a large tank, they're they're nice fish to have, and sometimes you can keep them with things like Oscars uh, because they're pretty quick. I like this tank a lot. There's a lot of smaller uh, severums. You see some gold severums. We've got all different types of Oscars. There's some albinos in there, tiger Oscars, red Oscars. Uh, definitely looked healthy. It was a nice setup. Uh, there was very little aggression. I watched that tank for a little bit, and of course, the really cool neon sign. How would you like to have that in the fish room? Some more angels here. We got the blues. And again, the camera's not doing the best job of picking up, but even at this small size, they're looking pretty nice. We've got a couple black ghost knives in there as well. But those angels are definitely nice looking. They had some really nice discus. Most of them had just come in, and they import... Uh, directly they kind of bypass the wholesalers and their discus for being in a bag as long as they were they looked really nice uh, here we've got some uh, more iridescent sharks 
so yeah, the discus were, were definitely uh, something to take a look at. And we come on up and we've got some Rams, electric blues it looks like. And again, they are in really good shape. And we've got some more rainbows looking healthy, swimming around. Come on down, we've got some more angels. Again, the angels, all their angels looked fantastic. And here we've got the neons. And this kind of gives you a view of the store on the other side. And then they had a whole other section. And this was actually surprising. I, I didn't realize this was here. Uh, my family was up here. And this was nice. The hardwood floors, the really kind of the aquascaping part of the store to show you what's possible. I got the plants here as well. Uh, nice selection of plants. Uh, and a couple different tanks. Plants look healthy, as you can see. And then they've got like the aquascaping tanks and the aquascaping materials and the substrates. And they've got the, the show tank there that looks in, to be in really nice shape. So they had some uh, some really cool tanks that were kind of an unusual size, but I think would look really cool. They got some nice looking shrimp as well. Uh, Caridina, Neocaridina, uh, some snails. And again, everything is clean. The glass is clean. The substrate is clean. Uh, I didn't really see any sick fish, any sick invertebrates, uh, which is definitely something you'd want to see when you walk into a pet store. Uh, this was a pretty cool display. The whole time I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, wow, that'd be awesome for shell dwellers. There happens to be a turtle in there. That wouldn't be awesome for shell dwellers, but the tank itself would be pretty cool. Yeah, probably not the best idea to put a turtle in with your shell dwellers, just an FYI. And then you come around, and there is yet another part to this store and this is all the salt water now you guys know I'm not a salt water person so I'm not going to be able to tell you about you know certain types of fish but again what I'm looking at here is a lot of the places not a lot but some of the places around me uh, the salt water setups don't look nearly this good and these tanks were in pretty much pristine condition I, I couldn't find any waste inside these tanks the fish were healthy and that's not necessarily an easy thing to do uh, especially in a you know a retail setup, and these guys uh, did a great job of displaying fish that are in pretty darn good shape. So very impressed here with the saltwater. Uh, you can see here it's they're in. I actually like to have some of these tanks. It'd be pretty cool to stack these you know three or four high, but uh, really nice job of keeping the tanks clean, keeping everything. And healthy order and there we go again we're on our way out but a great place everyone so that was the store a couple things you know we talk about wanting to further the hobby and wanting to make it a better place for those who are certainly starting out and it's something I definitely witnessed at the fish factory uh, usually around the holidays people get some money and they buy fish tanks and they want to put fish in them and uh, while I was there I noticed that a couple different instances where there were customers there who looked like they had bought fish tanks and kind of tried to set them up uh, maybe even from another store and the owner Steve and his employees did such a great job and had such patience with each one of the customers that came in showing them the way to do things right, fixing the problems that they'd already started. I know in one instance there was somebody there who had just started up a tank and threw in a couple dozen fish, didn't have a heater, and of course they started getting sick. And these are the types of things that local fish store owners do and local fish store employees do. And they are the backbone of our hobby. And so while the clubs are great and they are awesome, and if you have the opportunity to join a club, you should do so. But the local fish stores, if we don't support them, that's the backbone of our hobby. And that's why we want to bring you some of these fish stores to make you aware that they're there, that they're doing a good job. The fish obviously were in good shape. We didn't see any sick fish. So they're really taking care of the fish they bring in. They care about the people that are there. I noticed that in one instance, they actually steered people away from more expensive fish into fish that are maybe a little bit cheaper, a little bit easier for their customers to handle if they're just starting out. So they did a great job, again, we're going to be bringing you a couple more of these, uh, hopefully more of these in the future. But we appreciate you watching. So if you like this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.